thanks for y'all who come in, who have come through. Like I mentioned before, I want to talk about reactivity in Angular, uh, which has some meanings already today. Um, but the tweet by uh, Pavel, who works on the Angular team, uh, I think piqued some interest uh, in the Angular space. So at least wanted to have a discussion about it and see uh, what people had, if people had thought. I know people have thoughts on it. Uh, so we can share some of those thoughts and just kind of get a general feel of uh, the tweet. If you haven't seen it, it's pinned to the top of this space. So you can kind of look through the thread there. Um, and I see some people here who commented on that thread also. So if you have something that's more about it to say, feel free to hit the mic and come up and speak because I am interested in uh, what people's thoughts are. So, Chad, go ahead and introduce yourself while we're and then we can we can dive right in. All right. So, uh, hi everyone. Uh, this space was I pushed. Uh, I asked uh, Brandon to host this space, <laughs> space, <laughs> so it can be my shield. Um, so, so uh, uh, just like Brandon, um, uh, Brandon said, uh, Powell uh, posted a tweet about uh, like push-based reactivity that he, like primitive that he thinks. Um, it's like experimenting with uh, for Angular, and uh, just a disclaimer. Uh, I know this space is kind of early uh, to discuss whatever is going to be happening uh, from Power uh, tweet. It's going to be a while from now, but uh, I kind of want this space to be like a discussion point as early as possible for um, uh, for for this idea in, inside of Angular, um, so you guys can form questions, uh, concerns, uh, think about it. Um, of, especially for who's going to be uh, at ngconf, so you can ask Powell about it. I'm not going. I'm not going to be. So this space is kind of my discussion point. Um, <laughs> you just you're using this to to gather all the 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 the, the, in, the Angular ngconf like hive mind to get some around <laughs> ideas. That's what I'm hearing. Yep. 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 Oh, cool. Just, just, uh, we'll yeah, start just off. Kick, yeah, it's just to kick the ball, um, ro uh, just kick it rolling. I kind of want to hear what you guys think uh, about like the current state of reactivity. Like, what do you think when you think about when you hear reactivity in Angular, right? Um, yeah, what's my, on your mind? Uh, my one question we've already gotten, or one comment from Alex, who's my colleague at uh, AppRight. He said, "Doesn't his." comment was doesn't ArcJS handle reactivity and I guess he's being a little tongue in cheek there but uh, I think that there is some truth to that today as far as uh, how we view how you build Angular apps and what we consider uh, reactive Angular applications to be. Um, if we go back to uh, like the Angular JS days uh, we didn't have well I'll say the bulk of us didn't have like RxJS and Angular JS, unless you were like an outlier. Um, I happen to be one of those outliers because we actually used uh, RxJS in AngularJS applications uh, just because we had a need for it and it was kind of early at the time. So, um, but of course, you know, time has moved on and then Angular, AngularJS turns into Angular or Angular 2, excuse me, turns into Angular and uh, RxJS becomes like a, I'll say more of a foundational piece of what we consider to be uh, the way to build a reactive Angular application. So pushing aside like your views on state management libraries, making Angular reactive or not, at the end of the day, you can build some sort of reactive system in Angular today just using RxJS on its own and uh, subjects and however you want to roll with that. And then, of course, we have um, NGRX, which is a part of that. I see Michael Lackey in the in the space here. We've got RX, uh, Angular, and, of course, NGXS, Akita. We can go on and on down the list. I see um, I saw another person in the space here also, Mike Pearson. He's working on a library called State Adapt. And so he's been writing some articles and videos on uh, progressive reactivity in Angular also, which I have found interesting. So... Um, that's my at least overview of what we consider to be the reactive system that we have today is 
using RxJS and observables to push data around and to trigger change detection, trigger re-renders uh, when data changes, um, things like that. So the particular patterns that we built around that, I think you use that as the foundation. What do you what do you think? Do you have anything to add there, Chow? Um, not really. I don't think I have anything to add there. Um, um, I now I want to get into putting our uh, RX JS aside, like um, the reactive the reactivity in Angular today. I think it's kind of there, right? When you just have like a class property, um, it just like the template just reacts to that property. But then you're missing some, um, some like important pieces like uh, computed property, or mm -hmm. uh, just like watch, like the property changes and stuff like that, right? Then now you're gonna have to kind of go into the ArcGIS space, uh, where you're gonna have to explain ArcGIS to your like new Angular developers or a new Angular mm -hmm. team, right? So yeah, usually how it goes is the yeah. As I said, yeah, usually how it goes is you have to learn Angular and and TypeScript, or maybe less learn TypeScript these days. But it used to be that you had to learn Angular, TypeScript, and RxJS like all at the same time if you were new to an Angular app. But go ahead. Yeah, so uh, I think having a primitives, um, like reactivity primitives, in Angular would be beneficial in that sense. Um, but like when, when we look at the side of now, we, we just did a like 14 version, not for 14, I think 12 version in, into Angular. I just has become some, somewhat like ingrained in the Angular developer's mind. So I want to pose a couple of questions. I don't have an answer for those. But I want to pose a couple of questions to, see, to hear what people think or to let people think about it. Do you think like a reactivity primitives is needed now, right? When we have maybe more important stuff to do in the compiler, right? To be relevant I, I, again against the ecosystem. Should we just yeah. like, embrace RHS? Like just use RHS? Like, uh, uh, I mean, uh, maybe have, have the Angular uh, core Cobase just depend on our uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's a uh, <laughs> that's a loaded question depending on who you ask. Um, yeah, if I have been on both sides of this, and I'm I'm still on the side of Angular should and Angular's already Eric Jess is already a part of Angular, so. In order for Angular, new Angular developers to be more productive, I think that Angular should either like fully embrace RxJS and like more um, integrate it in more with the framework, even more than it is now. If if we want to, if say that that's the foundation and that's what we're going to build this reactive system off of, or I think they should um, come up, which is part of what this discussion is about, come up with a system that doesn't depend on it at all, but somehow lets you opt into uh, the, the power of like RxJS if you, if you want it. So, so like um, you can upgrade it, you know, the existing things to work with RxJS, but it's not a requirement out of the box. Um, I think where it stands today, if if you if you ask me what where it stands today, which way would she, would the team go? I would say that they're looking at trying to build a system that doesn't rely on RxJS, that um, relies on <clears throat> some system that's built into Angular, where we have to lean more on the compiler, lean more on like the internal systems that are already in place um, to build this reactive system today. And I'll read a comment that uh, Michael Leck, he had here. He said, what he see is a downside of it's not lazy, it's okay to work in a class, but unaware of the template, the actual place where values are needed. 
Uh, we need to ask if there are any approaches to handle that. And that and we can get into that part also. But um, I think for if we're looking at it from the perspective of a new Angular developer, then do we want to couple a new Angular developer and a new RxJS developer together? Um, and I think that the Angular team has always like struggled with this part of they want you to even they want you to learn Angular before you have to learn RxJS, um, even though eventually you're going to have to learn both as it is today. And I think they will punt like to punt that that cliff uh, as far as possible before you have to get to that point. Um, but in the case of that, Angular is going to need something in the meantime to like replace what RxJS does today. And that is to give you a system that hopefully prevents you from, hopefully helps you in writing more uh, declarative ace code that handles like async, async activity. Cause I think that's where most people get tripped up at. Um, as we've seen, as I've seen, at least I've seen over time in AngularJS and in Angular, uh, when we're just using like promise-based systems where you get into these race conditions and um, people expect it to happen one way and like things like async await have helped with that. But I think it's still an issue that a lot of developers run into uh, today. And while, while I'm speaking, like I said, if anyone else wants to come up, uh, just feel free to hit the mic and uh, we'll bring you up onto the space here to share your Opinions, if you have some, uh, but yeah, that's where I, that's where I'm at with it right now. I was all all in on um, RxJS in Angular uh, before, but it doesn't seem it does it hasn't ever seemed like the team is willing to go down that path, um, just because it, it hasn't been like a consensus of. It's always felt like an even split on whether it should be more or less. So. Yep, I think I think so too. Um, but I think like the community, as large now, is gonna have <laughs> uh, some trouble, you know, like uh, breaking away from RxJS instead of an Angular, Angular application. Uh, I like uh, Michael tweet about uh, what he wants to see inside of a like a reactivity system, right? State, in fact, mm -hmm. template. Um, now, what I, what I don't want to see is some kind of like uh, pipe, like async pipe to be used with this like, reactivity system. Hell, I don't, I want, <laughs> I kind of want the, <laughs> uh, the Angular template to just uh, recognize um, the stream instead of mm -hmm. having to do like the async pipe out of the box. Yeah, I would, I definitely agree with you there. Um, I, we've always, I think that's what we've been like after for a while is trying to get to where reactive system or not, we want something to just like handle that sort of thing. This is, and this is how part of how uh, Svelte works. You can define a store in Svelte and in your template, you just prefix your variable with a dollar and the compiler just knows to pick that up as a stream and knows how to subscribe to it how to get values out of it, how to unsubscribe to it when the component is destroyed and the developer themselves don't have to do anything uh, with that. So um, I think that would go, even if we had something that could you could just plug in, it just knew how to handle async things um, as if, like I said, as if the async pipe was just part of the, the framework itself or just like built in instead of having to bring in like common module and, or the, I guess it would be the async pipe directly soon. Uh, once we get all these standalone uh, components, pipes and directives uh, uh, built out. But, um, but yeah, and even in Pavel's uh, tweet, he had the syntax in the template, I thought some of it was interesting. Um, because in one of the tweets, it was, and maybe it was him, maybe it was someone else, but 
they were like wrapping the the value what what's look what looked like a dollar sign and a function, which um, I guess it was just used to track like unwrap the value and track the state of the value, which I thought was interesting. Um, but on the other side of that, I think that there was a, maybe another one that somebody posted where it was kind of using more something that was more similar to solid to where you were like calling functions in the template, which we have like traditionally like frowned upon, I believe. So um, as causing like performance issues. So like, how did the, how do all these things fit in with like change detection? And um, we're going to have to lean more on the, more on the compiler to know and be aware of all these sort of things. So um, like I said, I thought that the tweets were interesting in the, and I want to see where I'll be at NG console. I'll, get to talk to Pavel more and along with everybody else who's going to be there um, about where this is going. And hopefully I'm, I'm assuming he's going to give a talk about this also, but uh, I'm definitely interested to see what, what kind of things come out of this. And if some of the things that we've recommended as far as building Angular apps and things we do in the template, if some of those things change if something like this system does come along the way. Yep, definitely. Uh, make sure to ask him about input as well. <laughs> we, we need, uh, what, we need, to, what is, we need what the inputs to be reactive. We need the inputs to be reactive oh. as well. <laughs> See, it's a, okay. I I don't I don't want to be like Mister Hot Take here, but I don't think that I don't think they'll do anything with inputs. I could be wrong, of course. But I think it's like a, everything in Angular is like an incremental, which is good. Everything, you know, is thought out is, you know, they try to look at all the edge cases, see what others are doing, understand like what people are building and how they're using it. So things tend to roll out a little more slowly. So like, yeah, I don't like introducing new stuff into the template syntax and like reactive inputs, that seems like a lot. Um, not to say that I don't want to see it, but it seems like a lot. Yep. I, I mean, I don't need another syntax. Um, however, I do need like the, the new reactive syntax that whatever that syntax the Angular uh, team comes up with takes into, takes into account of the difference mm -hmm. between the TypeScript class with an Angular component input because the inputs get resolved later, right? It doesn't look like it. It get resolved earlier, you know, when we have like these computer properties that based on the inputs. I want to have a way, like a straightforward way to have computer properties based on the input without having to jump through loops with like set of inputs or ng on changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I and think- it's like, just, just like, uh, like a use memo mm -hmm. inside of a React where you have like a dependencies array with the props, right? <clears throat> Mm -hmm. So I want to ha I want to have that tied up like reactively based on the inputs. I don't really need the inputs to be reactive themselves because I again I tend to avoid like changing the values of the inputs inside of the component uh, that they mm -hmm. need to define these inputs anyway. Um, but yeah, I kind of want to have I want to be able to compute the properties based on the inputs without jumping through hoops. <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> I think that. Um reasonable to reasonable to have here Hold on, let's see. okay <laughs> sorry i was looking at i was looking at discord and i was, got a mention with somebody uh, mentioned in the space which i appreciate that um but yes i agree the the what we've been asking for i think for the longest is just to have more access to like build on top of these well, like I said, in the beginning, we were asking for more access to build more reactive things on top of RxJS that were like provided by the framework. Um, and I think we're still wanting that today. Uh, but I don't know, like I said, I don't know that RxJS is going to be the, the avenue that we get those sort of things because I, Angular itself, of course, will always has wanted developers to rely on like change detection and 
Zone JS to to kind of handle that that magic part for you of of everything reacting to uh, when data changes and hooking all that stuff, kind of wiring all that stuff through the template. But it doesn't give you much guidance on how you can manage those sort of things before you get uh, to the template and some of the other things that were you mentioned before about like having faking these things into the component, like the template, that sort of thing. Uh, to me, Angular is also like in a shift of, uh, well, not in a shift. Uh, everybody else is doing components as functions. Um, and Angular is still doing components as classes with string templates. So, um, and now we're on this path of where we're introducing uh, Angular, introducing a lot of functions to go along with these class components and decorators and things. And I think it it makes Angular components it puts Angular components like in a weird place. I don't I don't know I don't know a better way to say it because I don't want to sound negative about it, but it's like we have class components, then we're bringing in these funk these functions like create state for example we have create state uh and you have to like bring that into the class component and put it on a property and then use it in your component class and then you're passing some of those things to the template and then everything but everything else is still class based like are we going to be wrapping these create state calls and services like are we going to basically take what component store is today and add create state that's provided by angular and use that maybe as a as a primitive inside of these classes and still like lean on dependency injection and things so um like i said i like the i like where angular is going with the functions and things i think it simplifies uh how we construct these things but like i said it's it's, it's kind of weird like even with the the inject function super cool um but if we start introducing more and more functions that take advantage of that then your component is going to be like this mishmash of uh, components and inject functions and like constructor di and that sort of thing so uh of course then we're going to have to have new patterns and stuff around that so I'm, I'm interested to see what how we're going to like do that if this new system isn't class based or isn't like provider based, which is what we're used to. I see Alex uh, Patterson uh, came up to speak. What's up, Alex? How are you? Hey, Brian. Um, I think you hit a lot of where my head was going with this, but the only addition, um, but what makes it so powerful in React is you can do all the custom hooks as well. And I think you were starting to talk about providers and services and how that balances out. So I'm kind of curious how far we would take this as well. Um, I don't know how that would work with the dependency injection side of it. Yeah, that's a good, it's a good point. I'm not, I'm not sure. Cause like I said, we, today we're like, if you need to, add some, you know, re if you need to add some reactivity to your components today, uh, we recommend that you use some sort of class or some sort of state management option to create something that you inject into your component so it can be better or more easily tested. Uh, you're not having to like depend on the magic or like mocking imports and things uh, to do that. Um, and you, if you, if we're talking about testing and things, but test how you use the t interact with the test bed, all those things kind of factor into what, how, how you build a component. So, and how you, how you build that component, how you test it, uh, the whole strategy around that. So like I said, the, like it, like I said, it, like I said before, it, it feels kind of weird um, today if now if they say you know let's say ng conf and they come out and say hey we're looking at you know changing the component syntax and instead of it's a decorator it's just a function now it won't be create component because we already got that um so whatever the function may be this is how you can take a you know a class and not use a decorator and create a component that way 
then we'll see if anything comes out of that. But like I said, it, it'll still be a while, I think, before that happens. And then after that, how do we how do we introduce this new way of creating components with this new way of creating or using these functions uh, in Angular that have been in, or that we're introducing now? Because we're going down this path with like the providers and not using ng modules for uh, or not using like static methods on ng modules anymore. So uh, yeah, I'm interested to see what we're what's going to happen, and we're interested to see how we're going to like blend these worlds because we've already started with like standalone components which i think is going to be a big shift uh even though it's still in developer preview uh today so we'll see i'm trying to look through the comments here uh see we got i'll read a couple of these uh circuit says should the state mechanism exist in parallel to arcjs or should both be combinable if necessary to take best benefit uh good good question what are you, what are y'all's thoughts on that yep i i don't know <laughs> i don't know if you can't say if, i don't know go ahead <laughs> no no in the i think in an ideal future where observable becomes like um, a JavaScript uh, primitive, right? just mm -hmm. like a promise, right? Then RxJS can just ship operators and that can become optional. And then we can combine these primitives with the observable, I mean the operators. But right now, I don't see a point of breaking them up. I don't, I don't see the point of breaking them up then like uh, hack away, uh, find a way to hack around and trying to combine these. I don't mm -hmm. know. It's just, it's just my feeling. I'd rather just use RxJS, even if this available. You know. Mm -hmm. I could, I could really see the separation of concerns there, like keeping the two separated out, because eventually, hopefully, <laughs> the browser is going to handle a lot of this functionality, and you don't need it in the library as much. So we could eliminate RxJS completely as a library out of Angular. You know, that would be um, an interesting change. Uh, well, I'll preface this with saying they have been trying to get RxJ or trying to get the observable type. I got we got to separate the two things. Trying to get the observable type into the browser for a while, and I don't know that. I don't know where like what the status is if that's even still moving along, but but yes, like I said, if you could drop like RxJS as a dependency. And the operator just be the thing that you use. That will be that will actually be great for. <laughs> well, I think it'd be great if you're just using the observable type, but we still have all the other things that are built on top of that, like subjects and um, the behavior subjects and the replay subject. Everything is built on top of that, so that those things will still have to live somewhere. Uh, along with uh, the operators, but uh, we'll see. I got a couple other people requesting to talk. Um, see, hopefully, I hit the thing right here. Okay. Let's see, Mike, uh, you've been on there. Thanks for thanks for coming up to chat. Uh, and then we have uh, I, I refer to you as Oz, uh, uh, but I think your name is uh, Evgeny. Uh, but thanks to you for coming up to speak. Also. Uh, Mike, go ahead. Uh, you first, and then we'll let the other person speak. All right. I think maybe I got behind a little bit on my audio somehow. Um, so hopefully I didn't miss something important that, uh, that's relevant to what I'm about to say. But um, I I feel like the resistance to RxJS and Angular, it, it probably comes down to two main things. One is it is kind of awkward to use with with the templates. Um, and so people feel like they have to learn a different way of, of using Angular with RxJS. Um, but then like the, you know, the reactive pattern itself, if, you know, Angular comes up with a different primitive to come up with or to handle reactivity, um, 
to help people avoid from uh, learning RxJS, uh, like at the same time they're learning Angular, I think, I think there will still be this kind of resistance because if it does the same thing RxJS does, it's going to be just as hard to learn. So that's what I wanted to say. Yeah, yeah, thanks. One thing I did want to add to what you were saying is, and even to the the tweak that was mentioned, is even with the computer properties and everything, all these things still feed into the template. These things aren't um, things that you can use, like, at, at least as far as I know, these things aren't what you can use on your on its own to like build up these like reactive systems uh, to do that. These things all feed. It seems like to me still feed the template primarily, so that you can defer that that sort of thing to change detection or uh, it does you know some of the checking and setting properties underneath um, based on these functions that you use that the framework is aware of. Uh, ah, let's go ahead. Uh, hello. I wanted to say that um, maybe class com components as classes, it's not the most pure approach, but uh, dependence injection is an amazing thing. And uh, we could maybe use functions for the components, but this, this way we should uh, somehow send all the needed dependencies into every function, well, every into every component, and it would uh, require a lot of boilerplate. And right now, dependency injection removes all that boilerplate. And now I agree that uh, proposal of Pavel is uh, kind of in a functional world, and right now it uh, looks not so maybe matching the Angular approach, but uh, if we can use it as decorators, uh, then uh, yeah, maybe it, it will defeat the existing Angular components design. That's my point. Cool. Thanks for uh, thanks for sharing that. And yeah, I agree with what you said. Um, some of what you said there, as far as at the end of the day, I think these two, the, the, the context of the tweet is nice and clean, but that's not how you build an Angular component today. Because um, there's more stuff that you have to, that template is part of a, you know, decorator metadata. So um, how we're going to, like it's all speculative, but how we're going to blend those two things together, um, we'll see how how far that goes. And then the other part is how much further does this system um, allow Angular developers to go? Does this system enable um, zoneless applications? I mean, if we have a reactive system inside of Angular itself and it knows based on, you know, the, <clears throat> the things that you provide and the connections that you make in the components and templates themselves, when to update uh, because all that stuff gets compiled down to JavaScript anyway. Will we need? Will we still need like Zone JS or will we still need these other systems? Uh, like at a basic level to to build some type of applications on top of uh, with Angular. Is it gonna like? Is it gonna simplify? Big question is, is this going to simplify how you build an Angular application? And I think that's what Pavel has always been after, even with like Ivy. I mean, people may not know, but he was um, a big part of how Ivy came along and like the thought process of how Ivy was built. And but all that was to get closer to a point to where we could treat components like function, like pure functions to where you pass in some state and that, you know, component will give you back out a template um, that you can render on the screen. So uh, the thing that you, the mechanism that you use to do that would try to make that process easier um, and get more to that point to where, where we're just providing state and getting some rendered template back. So 
um, I did see some other proposals. Like I said, see some other proposals in the in the thread, and I'm sure we'll have more discussions on those. But um, yeah, if we like I said, it, and I already said this, if we get to the place where we're creating functions in Angular and then have the class components and things like how we're going to mix those two things together. Um, who who are we? And this may be a bigger question. Who who are we targeting? Like uh, Angular isn't exactly in the Angular is still popular, but Angular is not people's first choice. I think it's fair to say that uh, mo not the fair choice amongst Twitter. <laughs> it's still uh, a, a fair like amongst the first choices in like enterprise and bigger shops and like consulting and things like that. But if you ask the um, random developer on Twitter, it's like, what are you building your app with these days? They aren't going to say Angular. They're going to say React or Vue or Svelte or something else. So is this going to win over? Um, is making this system going to simplify Angular? And is it going to win over someone who may not have chosen Angular before? I think, and, and feel, feel free to jump in. I think like standalone components is the first step in that process of making Angular simpler uh, for a new developer to grasp. Um, and then maybe this reactive system is the next step in that. But uh, is it going to like shift the, the person's point of view of where Angular is and where Angular sits? Because like I said, it's more, Angular is a lot more big app enterprise focus today and does it change to where angular can be used for you know smaller apps smaller teams uh those sort of things and still be viewed like positively in that way because it's been like on this trend and as far as surveys and things take it's been taking a beating in the surveys <laughs> i think that's fair to say but i'm interested to hear what you all think as far as outside of Angular system that we're like we're in today, where you think it'll be? I think there's a there's a very interesting point. Though, no, how, however, we do have people, right? That 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 you know, go to reach out to Angular because of entry modules, because of glass components, because of all the things that Angular has today, and then the standalone components kind of like. Removing, not removing. I'm sorry, I'm using the wrong, wrong word, but <laughs> removing ng modules, right? So, I, I don't think it's about like winning uh, more people, more new developers, uh, because I think we're gonna lose them anyway. Uh, the, the thing that I want to, like Angular, uh, to to focus on is the uh, the interoperability with the ecosystem as a whole. You know, like all of these new uh, stuff coming out, um, streaming on edge, like hydration, all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> I think that's a that's a that's a better target, or that's the better, I guess, point to 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 target instead of the the the, uh, the developers themselves. <clears throat> so that like Brandon, you don't have to do uh, spike driven development anymore. <laughs> hey, the, I I said that honestly because I was building something with Angular like on a Friday, and I was like, I was, I was sitting there questioning myself, like, what am I even doing? Like, I want to these things that I want to see uh, Angular have. I don't know what level of interest there is from the the team to actually do some of these things. So, but like you said, these are things that we in the community want to see we want to still see angular move forward and um and i think that the the project that i'm working on is like a prime example of that is angular primarily still uses webpack today if you're using angular cli or using you know nx cli or that sort of thing underneath they're still building apps with webpack and going through like the the whole builder executor ecosystem um and then it's like every there's angular doing this and like everybody else practically everyone else is 
jumping on the V train. And um, and my question is, why can't we have that too? Uh, there's nothing. V is new. Yes, it's a lot younger than uh, Webpack, but people are still using. People are shipping apps to production with V today, and having an a better or maybe a more enjoyable development experience using that. And I feel like Angular should have that too. So. Um, whether that is a priority to, I know the Angular team does care about developer experience. They wouldn't be like trying to create these things that make development with Angular better if they weren't. But uh, to me, like this is, and we always talk about like, whenever somebody builds something for Angular, it's like, well, why doesn't the Angular team build this? Like, well, they can't build everything and we can't rely on them to build everything. Um, and the community, in my opinion, moves, is able to move a lot quicker than the Angular team does because they have their own set of priorities and things that they're working on. And they can't just like drop, say, okay, we're moving on to Vite now um, with the Angular CLI team, that sort of thing. But, um, and that was, like I said, part of why I want to, why I'm going down this path of trying to get uh, Vite working uh, to show that we can, you know, Angular should be in a place to where it can use Vite. And if we can get more of Angular to like officially support systems like Vite, it's not just Vite itself because you can, the Angular team already showed that you can build an Angular app with um, ES Build today with their experimental browser builder, which I used as like a springboard to get this V integration working. So I know that it's possible, but I think for it to be fully supported, it'll take a lot more effort. And how much is that something that they actually want to do? Um, and then like I said, it could be, you know, this could just remain a community, um, community developed project and still continue to move forward in that way, which I'm fine with. Um, but like I said, I still think that uh, all these things should be continuing to move for Angular forward. Like this reactive system, that becomes a thing. Um, if we're trying to move to the next generation of build tooling, which that's what I think Vite is, uh, then we should be trying to support that so that it doesn't feel like Angular is getting left out of uh, or left out or left behind, I would say. And we can still uh, be able to build build cool things with Angular and the, and it doesn't feel like dated or anything like that. We've gone on that path with like Protractor and Karma and they eventually dropped those. And uh, like Webpack and Vite are being like the next steps in that process. But uh, even though, like I said, Webpack is, you know, in number of times larger than what V is today, but uh, you can definitely see the shift. I think in the in the ecosystem with tools like that, uh, V and ES Build, and tools that are built on top of those things that uh, would have previous like would have previously used Webpack. And just from my experience in uh, trying to get this V integration working, I went down this path with like Webpack also trying to see what you know, what we could do as far as building that out. And uh, it just seemed more difficult to do with Webpack than with V, even though like probably like the same number of plugins exist and the same number of people support or more people may even support Webpack. It just seems like a um, a bigger barrier to, to entry there. So uh, if something else, you know, comes along that you service V, then <laughs> we'll we'll make the shift and and uh, adapt in that way. But like I said, build tools I think come along much more slowly than JavaScript frameworks uh, themselves. So or the tooling that goes with these front end frameworks. So like I said, I want Angular to have a seat at the table uh, with these other tools because if, if I understand correctly. 
if we're looking at tools like V, like Angular is like the basically the only one of the major ones that's left that doesn't have like official support. And if what I'm you know trying to build with the analog project helps move that forward, then I consider that a win in itself. Just like the plugin part of it, like the, the and I want analog to be something bigger than bigger than that, but um, like I said, V is like the foundation of that. So I'll, I'll get off the soapbox and we can get back to <laughs> get back to reactivity and angular part. Um, yeah, so the let's say we have something that you know creates these reactive stores and things, and then we'll um, we can get close to wrapping up it if people don't have any other thoughts on this. What do we think the adoption will be? Um, it, let's say, let's say these two things. Let's say, let's say RxJS and this system cannot be combined together that easily. How much friction do you think that would cause uh, with Angular apps if they're going to start leaning more on this system and moving more away from? RxJS as a primary way to to add that like reactivity or building reactive Angular apps, if that's the case. I I personally think that uh, this new system absolutely should be com combinable with the RxJS because, uh, as I can see from my experience with uh, uh, component storage Rx and with storage Rx. Uh, uh, when when you have all the uh, functionality of RxJS for controlling the state, it's it's very very useful. So it, it, we when we are creating well, when someone is creating a new system for Angular reactive system, it should not be less functional than the existing libraries. It it should be uh, compatible with the RxJS at least to provide the same power as existing libraries. Yeah, that, that brings up a good point. I will uh, counter that with they can't match everything that RxJS does in the initial version. Like, there, it just won't be, I don't think it'll have all the things that you can do with RxJS out of, out of the box when it, if this does ma like materialize somehow. I think it'll be something for smaller apps to start with, something that you you're still like I said still relying on Angular internals to to handle, and then maybe they'll see how complex they want to make this system. Um, but I don't I don't foresee it having all the power and the perceived complexity complexity that RxJS has today. Uh, but that's just my opinion. Anybody else got some thoughts? Yeah, I'm on. I'm on the same boat as uh, uh, especially uh, especially the uh, uh, high order uh, operators like Switch Map and all that stuff. I mean, I don't want to, uh, or even the debouse time. I don't really want to build my own debouse function. Not to work with the new reactivity system, you know. Uh, so. If it's if it's anything, I I like to be I like the new system to be compatible with uh, RxJS. Now, now, if you bring it a little bit uh, higher, and then you talk about HTTP client has to be compatible, uh, forms has to be compatible, um, or we can have like a, a new package called Angular Query, something like that. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> So my uh, Tim Tim uh, Describer is a, he I think he's already went down that path of building RX query, but uh, Angular query has a has a nice ring to it, I must say. Uh, but who's gonna who's gonna build it? I think, uh, and we can move towards a close here. But those of you who have been around the uh, Angular ecosystem for a while, you've probably noticed that the things that get the most attention are the things that people are passionate about. Even though, like the people who work at Google on Angular itself, like the, the 
the libraries, the packages that you see the most change with, like there's a person who has like a dedicated focus on that thing at the time. Like for a while, forms weren't getting much, you know, love and attention. Um, and then, you know, we got a person who was like dedicated to working on forms and, you know, pushed the whole type forms um, like initiative through. Even with the router, the router went through, I think, a spell of where it wasn't getting any new features. And now it's, it's like some of the, a lot of these things are like actively being developed, but there's a, like a person or, you know, people that you associate with that are like working on these individual areas um, of the framework and they seem to get more attention in that way. So um, even with this, this reactive system, like, Pavel's been kind of working behind the scenes for a while on Angular. Now he's actually a part of the Angular team. So now this is, to me, this is his like passion project. This uh, state, reactive state, built a reactive reactivity being built into Angular. Um, and he's kind of, I think, spearheading that as far as I can see. You know, I'm sure there are other people involved. I'm pretty sure Alex and, or, you know, they have like an internal team that are discussing this thing, these things. But if we're looking at it from like the outside, uh, he's definitely been the one that's been kind of like kicking around actual like ideas and willing to share code of get some thoughts and feedback and things. I think he's think he's been thinking about this for a long time to see what this system can look like. So uh, we'll see how things develop there. I'm hopeful for it. I'd like to see, I've been asking for a system built into Angular uh, that gives us some sort of reactivity for a while without having to reach for NGRX or uh, NGXS or RX state or these other things out of the box so that we can like, we have a baseline and say, if you want to, you know, go to the next step, you can, uh, bring these libraries in if you need to, but it's not necessarily that you have to do that up front. So ultimately that's what I would like to see um, if this system gets integrated there. Uh, I'll see if we, I'll see if we have any more comments here to add. We've got some about data handling, uh, building an NGRS component store into the primitive. I don't foresee that happening. Not, not, I don't foresee that happening in as it is today. If they if they do it, it'll be done the way the Angular team wants to do it. They won't just take component store and bake that in. Um, but that's my opinion on it. So, uh, yeah, I think on that, if no one else has any other comments to add, we will uh, wrap up here. Uh, thanks for everyone for coming through. I saw one more comment come through, so I'm going to look and see really quick uh, to see what it is. Okay, I didn't see. Okay, maybe it got filtered out or something. Cool. Thanks to everyone for coming through. Uh, if anyone wants to hop on some random Twitter spaces in the future to talk about Angular um, or talk about, if you're building something for Angular, we can talk about that too. Because uh, I, I enjoy these conversations. Chow, Alex, uh, Oz. Uh, I keep calling you that because that's what I refer to you by. And Mike, I uh, appreciate all of you for coming up and uh, having this conversation. And hopefully we'll do more of these in the future. Um, follow these people on Twitter. If you, uh, the people that are come up here, I see some familiar faces, like I said, in the, in the crowd also. Uh, Santos, uh, Andres, Kate, uh, Momar, um, Dwayne, Adam, I see you. Thanks for coming through. Uh, Enya, hopefully I didn't butcher your name too bad. He's the Angular, hi Angular hype guy. So appreciate you too. Um, yeah, we'll call it on that and we'll catch y'all in the next one.